Good morning. Uh, we are continuing by looking at examples uh, related to uh, the application of the matrix displacement method or the stiffness method and that is our today's lecture. Okay? Uh, matrix displacement stiffness method with examples. Okay. So, let us take continue looking at more examples and today I am going to introduce uh, to you uh, a situation where maybe one of the members is rigid. In other words, its flexural rigidity is significantly higher uh, than the other two members. How do we deal with such a problem? Let us look at the problem that we are looking at. This is a problem A, B, C, D. A is fixed B is continuous, uh, AB has EI flexibility, BC has um, EI flexibility and CD is the rigid uh, member. Okay? Again, uh, without going into the details, I leave it up to you to figure it out. Uh, you should uh, see that this is actually a 2 degree of freedom structure and uh, the R1 and R2 that I have defined over here, the displacement and rotation at V are my degrees of freedom. Okay? And what has been asked of you is the typical uh, structural analysis problem. Find out the displaced shape and the support reaction and bending moment given this load. This is the only load that is there on the structure. Okay? So, let us now uh, look at it. Uh, what I will do is I shall uh, look at this problem, uh, the solution process for this problem to begin with and then I will change this problem around a little bit to, to introduce to you another concept uh, of the um, in application of the stiffness method. Okay? So, let us see. What is the first step? Identifying the degrees of freedom and all the other the forces etc. The next uh, aspect is for each member to find out the degrees of freedom. First of all, find out what is the type of element. Remember that there is only two types of elements that we have discussed. One is the standard fixed fixed element and the second one is the modified element with fixity at one end and hinge at the other end, okay? pinned at the other end. Okay? So, we have to decide which one to take and then proceed. Now, note over here is that any member which is rigid is not considered a member uh, in the stiffness method itself. Now, how does the effect of that member come into the picture? The effect of that member actually comes into the kinematic relationship, we will see. So, Although CD is a member and we have to find out the bending moment uh, diagram for CD also, but in the stiffness method since it only refers to flexible members, okay, so therefore CD will not be considered a regular member in the uh, analysis. So in effect there are only two members AB and BC in this particular problem. So let us look at AB. AB if you look at it essentially the A, B. This is a standard element because A is fixed and B is continuous. So, therefore, you have this element. The degrees of uh, freedom are theta A, B and theta B, A. These are the two, uh, you know, member end deformations. Uh, that we are interested in. Uh, so, that is my V is going to have theta A B and theta B A. Okay? Now, uh, what about K? Obviously, then K of member A B is the standard 2 E i upon L. In this particular case, L is 4 meters, 2, 1, 1, 2. 
Okay. So this is my K B and finally I should find out the fixed end moments since there is no member since there is no member load therefore fixed end moments are both zero so this is for member a b now let us look at member b c member b c uh, it's rigid uh, the uh, at B it is continuous and at C also it is continuous. So the element is of the form this is B, this is C. So the degrees of freedom are theta B C, theta C B and therefore V of B C is equal to theta B C theta C B. Okay. Note that this one has a load in the member. K B C is the same standard one. 2 E I upon L and L again is 4. So it's 2 L 2 1 1 2. Okay. And the fixed end moment uh, the it's P L upon 8 we know that so uh, is going to be 100 into 4 divided by 8 so that's 50 kilonewton meter which is sorry this is B C and this is C P okay so we have evaluated what the degrees of freedom are what the stiffness matrix is and what the fixed end moments are. The next step is well the kinematics. Okay, now R1 equal to 1, so R1 equal to 1, this point where will it go since this is fixed it can only move in this direction, so R1 equal to 1 means B moves here. Okay, now this point also has to move horizontally by 1, but note that <coughs> uh, since this is an inclined member it cannot go this way, so it has to move along this. So it comes over here whose horizontal component is 1 and then from geometry you will see that this is equal to 3 by 4 and this is equal to 5 by 4. So what we have now this is the point that I was trying to make. If you look at it what happens over here is that this member which is rigid is going to go in this way. What is this angle? This angle is equal to 5 by 4 and the length is 5 meters. So this angle is 1 by 4. Now note that since this has rotated clockwise by 1 by 4, the to keep continuity this also has to the tangent has to go up by 1 by 4. This is 1 by 4 the tangent so that this continuity is maintained. This is an important point that I cannot highlight. The rigidity of this ensures that if this rotates by 1 by 4, then the tangent at this point, see remember that this is a continuous member. So if this rotates, if this tangent, see this is the original position. So if this goes clockwise by 1 by 4, so will this have to go to keep continuity because originally it is this way right this and this now since this has rotated by 1 by 4 this also has to rotate and so my if we look at the displaced shape over here 
this is how it looks. This one will go by one and if we look at it from the chord, this is the, these are the tangents and this tangent is equal to one divided by length and so is this one by four. Here the tangent, remember this tangent is this way, so this tangent is this way. So this one will go in this fashion, but over here the tangent will have to be off by 1 by 4. Okay, so if we look at this, okay, and we join this, okay, then this is the chord connecting C, B, A, D. Okay, and if you look at this particular one, how much is this angle? This angle has to be equal to 3 by 4 divided by 4. So this is going to be equal to 3 by 16. Now what about this from the tangent? Okay, if you look at this particular situation, what is this angle equal to between the horizontal and this? Between horizontal and this, this is going to be equal to the same because it is the same angle. So this is 3 by 16, but from here the tangent is 1 by 4. So from to the tangent is equal to 3 by 16 plus 1 by 4, which is equal to 7 by 16. Okay, so that's and this one we don't need to consider. So therefore, this angle, so theta AB is equal to 1 by 4, theta BA is equal to 1 by 4. Are these anticlockwise from the chord to the tangent? Both are anticlockwise. So therefore, you have plus 1 by 4 and plus 1 by 4. And over here, from the chord to the tangent, this is 3. So theta BC is equal to minus 3 by 16. And theta CB is equal to from the chord to the tangent clockwise. So it's minus 7 by 16. That's all we need. CD does not come into the picture because CD is a rigid member. So you look at the kinematics. The kinematics is very, very important when you have a rigid member. You see, the thing is, if this had not been a rigid member, then this would have gone something like this and this would have remained the same. But since this is a rigid member, okay, as soon as this has to rotate, the, from the tangent, this one turns out to be 1 by 4 because it's rigid. And as soon as that is 1 by 4, this also has to rotate. So this is an important point that all of you should understand in the kinematic relationship wherever rigid members are considered. Today this is my, uh, today I am going to be taking up, my focus is going to be on the effect of rigid members in the analysis of frames. Okay? So, uh, so this is the, for R1 equal to 1, this is the uh, displacement pattern. Now let's look at R2 equal to uh, 1, so R2 equal to 1 is rotation and always remember that rotation it's always easier to do because rotation does not involve any okay so this is the rotation let's look at it can this point joint rotate without causing any uh, displacement sure it can it can go in this fashion and i'll show you Now note that, please note one very important thing and that is that I always show displacements as exaggerated and uh, it's obvious that this is not, in other words that you know, uh, what the uh, tangential motion does not increase the length of the, so therefore even though I write 3 by 16 etc, it's not really 3 by 16, it's 3 by 16 of R1, R1 itself is very small, 
this is 1 into R2, R2 itself is very small. So, it is just that uh, you know I am taking R1 and R2 equal to 1 to essentially establish. So, here what is the rotation? 0. Rotation here this is B, A, C and D. So, A, B 0, B, A 1, B, C 1, C B 0. So, now can we write down the uh, A matrix for this particular structure. So, for A B the A matrix is equal to 1 by 4, 1 by 4 and for R 2 it is equal to 0, 1. For B C A is equal to minus 3 by 16, minus 7 by 16 and 1, 0 for R 2. So, this is my A matrix. Okay? Then the next step is relating S i S i is equal to K i into A i R plus S i 0. Okay? So, what we have to establish is we have to establish K i. So, for A i. So, for A b K a is equal to 2 e i upon 4, 2, 1, 1, 2 into 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 0, 1. So, this is equal to Two e i upon four into two by four plus one by four, so this is three by four. Two into one, so this is one. This one by four plus two by four, three by four, and this is two. So this is for a b and s i zero is 0, 0. This is for A, B and let us do find out that for B, C 2. So, if we find out for B, C, you will see that K, A is equal to 2 E, I by 4, 2, 1, 1, 2, multiplied by A, which is minus 3 by 16, minus 7 by 16, 1, 0. Okay. So, if you put this together, what you get is 2 E i by 4, and minus 6 by 16 minus, uh, so this is minus 13 by 16. Similarly, this minus is going to be minus 17 by 16. This is going to be equal to 2 and this is going to be equal to 1. S I 0 is going to be equal to 50 minus 50 kilonewton meter. Okay? So, we have written these down and the next step now is to find out R 
effective is equal to summation over all the members a i transpose k i a i into r plus summed over all the members which have fixed ten moments this plus the effect of and in this particular case uh, I just wanted to uh, tell you that how do we get AI trans A bar uh, you will see that A bar essentially is what for member BC the which is the loaded member we need to find out what is the vertical displacement of B so that is 0. So, we can write down for B C because B C is the only member. So, A bar is equal to B C that is 0 then the vertical displacement of C which is 3 by 4. So, this is 3 by 4 and what is the displacement corresponding to R 2 vertical 0 0. So, we can put down 0 0 ok and uh, the important point to note over here is that what are n i o since it is 100 at the center going to be the reactions are going to be 50 50 upwards ok. So, this is what we have and therefore, for A B for A B since the, there is no fixed end moment and there is no fixed end reactions obviously. Therefore, these two terms do not exist for A B and the only term that exists is A I transpose K I A I. Now, for A B K I transpose K A is already given. So, A transpose becomes 1 upon 4 transpose is 1 upon 4 0 1 that is A transpose multiplied by 2 E i upon 4 into what we have already computed 3 by 4 3 by 4 1 2 and this is equal to 1 by 4 1 by 4 uh, I'll put e i upon 2 outside. So, you have 1 by 4 into 3 by 4 that 3 by 16 plus 3 by 16 that is equal to 3 upon 8 here you have 3 upon 4 this way you have 1 by 4 plus 2 by 4 3 by 4 and this way you have 2 ok. So, that is A i transpose K i or we can call this as the contribution to the structure stiffness matrix of A B ok. So, now what we need to do is we need to find out the same thing for B C, but of course for B C we also have to find out your uh, the A i transpose S i 0 as well as A i uh, prime transpose into N i 0 because B C has member loads. Okay? So, what do we have here? Uh, if we look at it that B C first is A i transpose K i A i. Now, A i A transpose for uh, this will be minus 3 by 16 minus 7 by 16 1 0 and the uh, A i transpose is A, A K i A i is already been obtained that is equal to 
minus 13 by 16 minus 17 by 16 to 1 and if we look at that this becomes ei over 2 what do we have 39 upon 256 and 119 119 and 39 is 158 upon 256 so one uh, sorry 39 and 119 uh, is um, 158 so it will become 79 upon 128 this one is going to be equal to minus 13 by 16 this is going to be minus 6 plus minus 7 so that's going to be minus 13 by 16 and this one is going to be 2. So that is the contribution to the structure stiffness matrix of BC. I also need to find out AI transpose N, uh, NIO. So if I do that um, AI transpose SI is going to be equal to minus 3 by 16 minus 7 by 16 1 0 multiplied by SI which is 50 minus 50 okay and this is equal to if we look at it is going to be equal to uh, minus uh, 50 so I can take it as 1 so it will be minus 10 upon 16 into so it will be minus 500 upon 16 500 upon 16 will become equal to minus 125 upon 4 and uh, on this side I will have uh, 150 so this is going to be 50 so this is going to be AI transpose SI and uh, finally I need to do AI prime transpose into NI0. AI prime transpose is going to be equal to 0, 3 by 4, 0, 0 into 50, 50 is going to be equal to 150 by 4 and 0. So therefore if we look at it and by the way what is R prime equal to? R prime you will see that there are no nodal loads so R prime has to be equal to 0, 0. So once we put all of these things uh, together okay uh, what you get is let me put it all together so I'm doing the summations so I have 0 0 equal to now I need to do KAB KAB is given by this and KBC is given by this so this is equal to I can put EI by 2 outside and inside I will have uh, 79 by, uh, plus 48 79 by 48 is 127 upon uh, 127 upon 128 uh, 1 uh, here you have 13 by 16 and 12 by 16 so I will get minus 25 upon 16 okay uh, 13 by 16 plus 12 by 16 yeah minus 25 by 16 here also we will get minus 25 upon 16 and over here you have 2 plus 2 which is equal to 4 okay and uh, this times r1 r2 plus suppose that is 
minus 125 by 4 plus 50 plus my AI transpose which is 150 by 4 0. Okay, this is the relationship uh, that I have and uh, if I uh, plug in uh, this, what will we get? We are going to get equal to, let me see, I will put this in down, put this on this side and put the EI outside and then what we get over here is Uh, 127. So, this becomes 0 0.4961. This one is 2 and this one is 25 upon 32. Let me go back and check whatever we have written down. Okay. Uh, this is equal to uh, 3 by 8 EI R1 plus EI upon 2. Okay, that's okay, MAB. Then MBA is equal to 3 upon 8 EI R1 plus EI R2. Correct. So I'm just, I'm right now just going back and checking uh, whatever the uh, statements that I have made. KA, uh, I have uh, 13 upon 32 EI into R1 plus mm, EI uh, R2 plus 50 and the bottom we have minus 17 upon 32 plus EI. If we look at this, okay, this is minus 13 upon 16 and KAB is 3 upon 4. So, actually if you look at this, when you add the 2, you do not get minus 25, you get uh, 12 and you get uh, minus 13 plus 12. So, you get minus 1 upon 16, minus 1 upon 16, okay. And so, this is also minus 1 upon 16, that is what I was checking. And then this equation becomes minus 0 0.03125 minus 0.1325 is equal to and on this side we have it equal to uh, plus uh, minus 125 okay and plus uh, 150 uh, just let me uh, check this over again uh, just let us do all the checks uh, properly what we get over here is minus 3 upon 16 into 50 uh, plus oh okay again here is a mistake a uh, minus 3 uh, into 50 and here we get plus. So, basically you get uh, properly if you do it you will get 4 upon 16 positive. So, this is going to be plus 4 upon 16 which is so this is going to be plus 50 upon 4. Okay. So, here we have plus 50 upon 4. So, plus 50 upon 4 plus 150 by 4 is equal to 200 by 4 which is 50. So, 50 and 50. So, what we get on this side is minus 50 minus 50 of course into sorry R1 R2. Okay? So, this is the final equation that we get and if we look at this equation the solution turns out to be equal to you can solve for this R1, R2 is equal to 1.00 0, 0, 
eight nine upon e i and here I have two point zero three one two five point zero three one two five point four nine six one into minus fifty minus fifty is equal to minus hundred and two point four six upon EI minus twenty six point zero upon EI. So this is my R one and R two. I know what my R1 and R2 are and once I have got my R1 and R2, can I draw my displaced shape? Let us try to do that. We will draw the displaced shape and how do we draw the displaced shape? Well, let us look at it. This is this way, this is this way and this is This is the undisplaced shape where this is rigid. Now we know that the R1 which is this is minus which basically means R1 was positive in this direction. So this will have moved by 102.46 in this direction. Furthermore, uh, the anticlockwise is considered as positive. So minus 26.6 is that if this was straight then it has moved clockwise. So this is your tangent at this point for this and therefore this also will have moved a 90 degrees. Now note another thing that this point will have moved by 102.6. So therefore, this will have moved at 90 degrees to this. So this is my point and if I look at this particular point okay, and I were to draw the displaced shape, the displaced shape would look like this. This one will have moved and note that this is rigid. This is rigid so it has to move in a straight line. How much is this? If we look at this, this is equal to 102.46 divided by EI. If this is, so this one will turn out to be 3 by 4 of that. So 3 by 4 of that is equal to 76, 845 upon EI and this is equal to then 128.08 upon EI. If this is 128 then this angle turns out to be equal to divided by 5 which is equal to 25.615 EI. So if this goes this way note that this is the straight line that means this is also equal to and therefore this one will also have moved, this is moved anticlockwise. So this will also have moved anticlockwise and this should be it where this is equal to 25.615 to the horizontal. So if we look at this, so this is going to look like this. this and this okay where this angle and this angle both of them are equal to 26.60 upon ei this displacement is equal to 102.46 ei and this is the displaced shape this is straight this the angle here is 26.6. This one is 78 uh, point and note that since this is this way 
this will actually go this way and then go in this manner okay and this is so this is the displaced shape that we have for the uh, structure okay and once we have the displaced shape and we also have our uh, uh, r1 now i've got my si for both ab and bc so uh, therefore for s ab is going to be equal to 2 ei upon 4 into we've calculated this earlier this is ki ai this is equal to this into r1 and r2 r1 and r2 are 102.46 upon ei minus 26.60 ei there is no si0 so that is 0 so sab is equal to um, minus 51.72 and minus 65.02 kilonewton meter that is this is mab this is mba okay so having done that for ab we can find it for sbc SBC is equal to 2 EI upon 4 minus 13 by 16 minus 17 by 16 2 1 into minus 102.46 upon EI minus 26.60 upon EI plus SI0 which is 50 minus 50. These implies that MBC, MCB are equal to in this particular case plus 65.02 and minus 6.02. 8 7 kilonewton meter once you've got the member end moments then it is important that we once you got the member end moments we can now take the free body to be able to get the support reactions and now note one thing that what are the things that we know we know that let me do it in red so that you can understand what we are doing. We know that this is equal to 51.72. We know that this is equal to 65.02. So what we know is, we know this and therefore we will know the shears here because there is no other load and the shears are going to be in this direction and they are going to be equal to this plus this divided by 4 which works out to be 29.19 29.19 see these we know okay now furthermore what else do we know we know for this one see we don't know what the vertical reaction here is there will be a vertical reaction we don't know what that is okay so therefore what we have to now do is we have to look at this particular member it has a hundred kilonewton force acting here we have a 65.02 moment acting here and we have a clockwise moment of 6.87 acting here and therefore you have one aspect which is this minus this divided by 4 that is 1 and the other is 50 50 both sides 
So when you combine the two, you get that this is equal to 64.04 and this is equal to 39.96. Okay, so once we know that from this we know that this is going to be 64 and so over here we have 64.04 kilonewton. This is kilonewton meter. This is kilonewton. So I know the uh, reactions at this end. Now let us look at this. See if this acts here, this has to act here, this has to act here, that is going to be 29.19 and therefore if we look at this, by this side we will have to have the situation that this will be 6.87 and over here we have this and this. This is going to be equal to this and this is going to be equal to this. So over here what kind of uh, reactions do we have? If we go through with this you will see that you get this is equal to, sorry this was 35.96. So you are going to get 35.96 and over here this is going to be acting in this direction 29.19 and moment over here if you check these out you will see that the moment will turn out to be 0. So this is the reaction at this support and this represents the reaction at the fixed support at A. This is D. These are the reactions at the hinge and these are the... Okay, so this is the way we can find out the reactions. And once we have these member end moments and these, we can now do the, draw the bending moment diagram. And that's the final one that once you know this, drawing the bending moment diagram and there I will draw the final bending moment diagram without going into how I have done it. I will leave it up to you to check it out. This is 51.72. This is 65.02. So what we have over here is this. This is equal to this kind of, so that tension at this side, compression at this side and over here you will have just the opposite way, this way. Now here you will have the same. Here you will have 6. So if we do this, this is going to be 100. So if we draw this, look like this. This is going to be the same, 65.02. This you can compute is 63. This is 6.87. So over here we have the same and Of course, here, this is the bending moment diagram, but that does not give rise to any flexure for the simple reason is that this is a rigid member. So, you do have and you do have a situation where you have this, but although this looks like this, the bending moment looks like this, there is no flexure. On these, you have uh, flexure. Okay? And that in totality is, I have got the bending moment diagram, I have got the reactions and I have got the displaced shape. Complete problem solved. Okay? Now, I am going to leave you with this problem and I want you to think about it. Same structure.
This is EI. This is EI. This one is now rigid. Okay. A, B, C, D. All I have done here is that in the previous case, this was rigid and this was flexible. Now, this is a more realistic kind of situation where the two columns are flexible and the beam connecting the two columns is rigid. This is a more realistic kind of structure. Why is it considered rigid? Because typically you might have a situation where the columns may be EI, but the beam because of its, it's a T beam, it may be something like 10 or 15 EI. For all practical purposes, you can consider it to be rigid. Okay? So, this is the same 100 ton load A, B, B, C. Think about this problem. I am going to leave you today with this. Think about this and we will take up this problem very quickly next time before we move on to the other kind of load effects or other kind of member uh, local effects which are important. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye.